Hey there, it's time for our rules review here at Little Wars TV for Killer Katanas 2, which is the rule set that we use to play Kawanakajima, if you watched that episode last week. And uh, this is a rule set that is designed, and it's uh, by Brian Bradford, designed for simulating big battles in the samurai era. We're not talking about skirmishes. These are army versus army. Just a reminder about how we do our ratings here on Little Wars TV. Uh, we rate everything in five different categories. They are weighted somewhat differently, however, so you can't just add up the numbers and get a final score. So, now let's get into it. All right, well, our first category we'll talk about in this review will be presentation, and uh, Killer Katanas 2 is a full-color cover and back cover. It's about 120 pages long, a little more than that if you include the quick reference material. Everything inside here is black and white. The front cover is beautiful. I love the artwork here. And then everything after that is a, a disappointment for me. Uh, it's all, like I said, black and white. It was laid out, just I'm assuming, in Microsoft Word. There are some very rudimentary diagrams in here. It reads a little bit more to me like a, sort of a technical manual, uh, advanced squad leader written back in the 80s kind of rule set. Uh, kind of has that old school vibe to it. So, was not particularly impressed uh, with the presentation of the rules. Uh, what were your thoughts? Uh, I actually am a little bit more forgiving, I think, than, than you are in this category. You're, you're right. I mean, it's, it's straightforward. It's kind of a, a technical writing style. Uh, but, you know what? It conveys the rules. So, you know, for me on presentation, yes, you know, I'll give some extra points if it looks pretty. Uh, but most importantly to me is does it actually explain to me how to play the game? And I thought it did a very good job of that. So, uh, I ended up giving it a, a, a decent score of seven. Uh, what did you do? Uh, well, to me, a five would be average, and this is clearly below the average of what I would expect from a set of wargaming rules. I think some of the benefits you just touched on, I would put a little bit more into playability versus okay. the presentation. Uh, so I'm going four out of ten on presentation, just a, a little bit below average. All right, so our next category is playability, and this is an important one. It's 30% of the final grade. I think any rule set that's talking about big battle, medieval Japanese combat, uh, Playability from an, a standpoint of are you going to be able to jump in really quickly? It's going to be tough because you know samurai armies are not something that everybody has and, and <laughs> That's you true. Know, I, I'm the only one that has any in our club and it's the only reason we play those battles is because I have them um, and uh, So if you're looking to just jump into the topic, it's going to be tough and Killer Katanas really doesn't do anything to help you there because as it's designed, it is 15 millimeters, it is a unit, is an array of bases, it marks casualties with, with base removal, and so you're gonna need a lot of figures. Now, if you watched our Kawanakajima battle, you'll see that we actually use six millimeter and we had individual units on just a single base. We were able to make that work, but it took work to get there, work that I had to do as, as the GM to come up with separate uh, sheets for unit strength. Playability, you know, you, you said that you put more kind of how easy it is to understand the rules in there. I right. do think that from a rules difficulty perspective, I don't think any of the rules are particularly hard. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the mechanics and the problems I have with the mechanics, but it's not because they're complex and in in something to understand. Out of the 120 pages here, less than 25 of it is the rules. Right. So right. The, don't let the 120 page no. thing throw you off. It, it, like you said, I, I don't think the rules were difficult to understand. And some of the criticisms that you're offering here about the barrier to entry, I think, may have more to do with the period than the rules. Right. I realize a lot of people don't have figures for mass battle samurai, but uh, they do offer in this rule set two different sort of scales of what a base would represent. Mm -hmm. He has like a tactical scale where one base of figures is 150 men. He has a another bigger battle scale where it's 300 men. Honestly, I don't know why you couldn't make it any number of men that you wanted. The rules, I think, are right. fairly flexible in terms of what a base could represent. Um, so I, I, I'm not quite as, as down on the playability as you for this one. Um, I do think mechanically it's very clunky, and we'll get to that. Right. But in terms of the barrier to entry, it's not particularly high. Um, for me, it's it's above average. Uh, I do take your criticisms, and that's why I'm at a, a 6 out of 10. It is above average playability. Well, I give it a 5, so not, not very much different uh, from you. Again, I think that the ease 
the ease of understanding the rules would get it a lot of points. It loses a lot just on, on the, those barriers to entry for me. Our next big category is mechanics. And to take a word that you used uh, earlier, uh, it, it should be Killer Katana's Too Clunky uh, as, a, <laughs> as a title. Because- It's not all is, bad. No, it's, it's not all bad. It's not all bad, but when you put all the pieces together, what you end up with is something that accomplishes one thing, which is very successfully, I think, simulating battle in this era, but does it in a very overly clunky, fiddly, time-consuming way. I think this gets back to what I also said earlier about this is a bit reminiscent of some of those 1980s. This is a whole different style of game. This does not fit into the modern genre of war right. games where things are a little bit more about streamlining and simplicity and beer and pretzels. Can you do it in two hours? That's not killer katanas. No, and I mean, if you open the cover of this and look at the publication date after you've read the rules, uh, you're probably going to be thinking, oh, this is this is an 80s or 90s game. And 2011! 2011! <laughs> yes. and, and to give you an example of what we're talking about here, so it's not just generalizations, uh, I'll actually give you a couple. Uh, when you're trying to figure out how combat is resolved, you have modifiers. Well, all games have modifiers, right? Well, some of the modifiers here, though, you have to cross-reference on charts armor type versus armor type just to yeah. find out a modifier that you then add in with all of the other modifiers. There are charts for charts. There are charts for charts. And then when you when you start talking about how do you determine casualties, well you take the number of troops and you cross-reference with the number of factors that you've added up with all those modifiers and, and you everything. Get this crazy looking chart right here, I mean there's like results of 1.6 and 1.4 and 4.4 and and the number before the decimal point is the number of casualties you inflicted, and the number after the decimal point, I think, is what you need to roll to maybe inflict a bonus casualty? Yes, and that seems easy enough, but there's, of course, a complex wrinkle with that, too, because if you have a one, uh, uh, say, like a 1.3, that you, means you've, you've done one casualty, you need to roll a die, and if you score, I think it's... Three or better. Three or better, yeah, right. it's, it's higher. Uh, three or higher, you get a second one. That seems easy enough. Well, then what happens when you look in here? It says 1.0. Well, you would think that's just a straight one, right? Right. No. <laughs> what you, that zero means is you still roll a die, and you have to roll a six, and then if you get a six, you get to roll a die again, and, uh, and if it's a four, five, or six, then you've done the additional casualty. So, you know, even a chart which looks big and scary that on, on your know, first reading of the rules says, ah, it's fairly simple. No, you've got to remember these other little rules. Um, and then there's a lot of things that can happen as a result of combat, and you end up putting out a whole lot of little reminder chits yeah. on the table. And uh, we tried to, to keep a lot of those out of, out of the video just because visually it makes the table look a mess. Uh, but there's a lot of statuses, half movement, and you know, one last battle, you know, some, some other stuff like that that you've got to keep track of. And you either clean off the table so you have a good looking table, which samurai armies really should look good if right. they're on the table. Uh, you either have, don't use those markers, in which case you're trying to remember all this stuff or you're taking notes on the side, or you're putting it on the table and I think really ruining the aesthetics of the game. Uh, so all of that put together, I just don't enjoy this game. Well, so I think we started at the lowest point here, which is the combat mechanics. The combat mechanics are objectively terrible. But if we can rewind for a moment and maybe start at what happens at the beginning of the turn, a lot of the other mechanics, I think, in Killer Katanas 2 are really not that bad. They're, they're, they're much faster. So this is not an I-go-you-go go game. No. When you start a game of Killer Katanas, it is a card-based game. Uh, a turn is divided into 16 cards, 8 for one side, 8 for the other, and half of your cards are infantry and half are cavalry. So every time you're flipping over mm -hmm. a card, it tells you side A gets to move its infantry. Another card, side B, gets to move its cavalry. And the cards will even go so far as to say how, how far you can move. Yes, um, and that changes from card to card. It it's does. not always the same. So you really, right. you're right, you, you have no, no way of predicting when you're going to be able to move and how far you're going to be able to move before something might happen to you. And I think you discovered that to your <laughs> sorrow in the Kawanakajima game. And Dieter I and I had a turn where it really went against us. There were like five or six black cards that all came up and uh, that really screwed up our plans. But you know, people who like card-driven activation will tell you that, that is, that's friction, that's the fog of war, uh, that's the randomness that's out of your control. So if you're a fan of that, I 
I get it, and the cards accomplish it in a clean and simple mm -hmm. way. And while I agree, I think that's a great way, and it goes again to what I'm talking about. It really simulates some right. things very well, and I think the card mechanic does simulate that friction. <gasps> Don't tell Keith I said that word. <laughs> uh, he doesn't know what it means. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, it, 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 you know, it, it's... It gets the positives. I think get overwhelmed by the negatives for me. So uh, you know, my my final score on the mechanics of this game is a four, which uh, is a killer in a thirty percent category. <laughs> that, that's pretty bad. Yeah, uh, mine's not that far off the mark. Uh, I think it's a five. It's wholly average. There's some there's some good. There's some bad. Uh, five out of ten. Yeah. Our fourth category, worth 20%, is historical flavor, and uh, I've got a feeling from the tenor of the discussion so far that you and I probably both agree that Killer Katanas 2 does an excellent job yes. with historical flavor. I like when I pick up a rule set and I know what it is for, right. and this is clearly for large battles in the Samurai Age. Uh, the rule book is, you know, littered with all kinds of uh, period flavor. The rules themselves, I think, strongly encourage use of uh, historical and period tactics. And if you're wondering what's in the other 120 pages of this rule book, since only 20 of it are rules, it's all uh, 12 scenarios, which are which are great. Uh, mm -hmm. Tons of information about uh, the way that clans were organized, what many of the clans were. There are army lists. Um, there's a, an entire chapter on, and this was my favorite part of the book, uh, formations. You know, mm -hmm. everybody knows, you know, in historical Japanese warfare, there's all these like crazy formation names. Well, this book has them all diagrammed, you know, the whooping crane attack. I yes, mean, exactly. It is all in this book for you to use, and so I think the historical flavor is outstanding. <laughs> and, and believe me, the real strength of, of this volume is not the rules. The strength are the scenarios, the strengths are the historical information that's in here. Uh, it's clear that Brian Bradford did a ton of research, and he, you know, my understanding is he did a lot of work with Stephen Turnbull, uh, who's, who's written extensively on the age of the samurai, was, was involved with Brian in putting these together. And so the information in here is great. One criticism I'm going to mention on historical flavor here is that he does have a mechanic in here for personal challenges, which, by the way, is just a must if you have a samurai game. There have to be personal challenges. I like that idea. The way that it's executed in here really couldn't be any less interesting. Right. Well, and you know, the interesting thing is, uh, I agree, every rule set needs to have rules for, for personal challenges because they did happen, but the fact is they didn't really happen historically in the way that a lot of people think that they did. So I actually think, you know, having unsatisfying personal <laughs> challenge rules is probably it's accurate. Historically accurate right? It's probably accurate. So, you know, for historical flavor. Now, if you uh, want something that's more cinematic, you're going to have to, yes, come up with different rules, but then it's not really going to be a simulation anymore. But, but you're not digging it more than like a point. Oh, yeah. I am not digging it more than a point, okay. and my historical flavor score is uh, a nine. Ah, okay. Uh, mine's a nine as well. Um, I don't think you could give it any less than a nine because for all of the negative things we've had to say about Killer Katanas, this is clearly a strength. Yeah. Last category is support. It's worth 10%. And, uh, you know, this is where can you go someplace and find help? Is there a forum online? Uh, community like of that? players. A community of players. Right. Uh, and, and the fact is there's really not much. Uh, you know, mm. There used to be, I think, a Yahoo discussion group. I was a member for a while. I don't I don't know if I'm still a member. Uh, I know that it basically petered out as far as participation. To the extent that there is a positive on the support end for me, and I always kind of include this in support, Brian Bradford put out a ton of supplements, uh, army lists and other scenarios, usually organized around large events like the invasion of Korea. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't know that there's any place you can buy them directly anymore. I, when I looked the other day, I could find a bunch on eBay or through places like Noble Knight Games. Uh, so you're buying them second hand, but they're out there. So I have to give it some points just, just because he put in the work on all those supplements. Certainly some credit for the supplements, and uh, the only other, I guess, bit of credit I can give Killer Katanas on support is that there are people who play, even still. I think that has less to do with Killer Katanas too, and more to do with the fact that there are very few options right. if you want to do large battles in feudal Japanese warfare. Right. but. Uh, Killer Katanas 2 remains popular among the small community of people who are interested in large-scale feudal Japanese battles. So you will find some after-action reports, you'll find people's blogs where they've got photos and write-ups of their battles, mm -hmm. but there is no official website for this, there's really no unofficial website for Killer Katanas, so uh, I'm going 
three out of ten on support, it's fairly low. Yeah, I, I gave it a four. Do you have any final thoughts before we give our compiled scores? The only thing, you know, one of the questions we like to ask is, okay, would you pay X number of dollars for this rule set? In this and case, 35. Yes, 35. Uh, you can buy it through On Military Matters. Sometimes you can find it secondhand on, mm -hmm. on eBay, something like that, but it's usually for about that price. Um, and, and my answer to that question is really kind of, it depends on what you're looking for. If you are looking for a rule set to play, uh, and aren't worried so much about the immense amount of historical detail and information that's provided here, no way. Uh, I think there are better rule sets out there. But the flip side of that is if what you're looking to get out of, of your purchase is a way to as accurately as possible simulate feudal J Japanese warfare, even if you're not going to have fun doing it, <laughs> or want the wealth of information, and, and because of the information in here isn't specific to Killer Katanas 2, you can use it for other rule sets too, as long as you're willing to do a little bit of work. If you don't want to hunt down all those separate volumes of Stephen Turnbull's work to add up your own troop rosters for particular battles, Nagashino, Kawanakajima, uh, and just want it in one volume, you know, 35 bucks is a little steep for something like that, but you know, what's your research time worth? So if that's what you're looking for, yeah, yeah, then I think it would be worth $35. And I certainly uh, keep this in my collection for exactly that reason. I think that uh, objectively just $35 for a black and white 120 page Word document um, is, is too expensive. I mean, you, you can get a nice hardcover rule set for 35 bucks. Uh, so I think the price is rather steep. Um, my caveat to it is that if you are interested in feudal Japanese warfare, as I said earlier, you just don't have that many options. No. So you're probably going to spend the 35 bucks on this to have this in your collection to take a look at because there are very few rule sets out there. If you're like me and you're sort of casually interested and you want to leech off of the miniatures of a friend, uh, to play the game, then you're not even going to consider spending $35 on this rule set. It is not nearly good enough to inspire me to paint figures for this era, or it's not innovative enough as a rule set for me to become interested in the game itself. Uh, that being said, I guess we ought to get to our final scores, and my compiled score, weighted score, would be a 58 out of 100, which is not great. Yeah, and I'm, I end up actually pretty close. Uh, I'm at a 56. Again, not great. Um, unfortunately, I think the negatives really drag this rule set down, and the positives just aren't enough to keep it buoyed and afloat. So, I guess the only question left for you as the viewer is, uh, how interested are you in feudal Japanese warfare? And uh, what, uh, what do some of the other people in our club have to say about Killer Katanas 2? Uh, if you go to our website, littlewarstv.com, you can take a look and see what all the other scores and reviews are for the guys in the club who've played it.